So I'm Anna Galletli, and we are now going to start the very last video for our AMP lab series, and we're going to be looking at an ear. So looking at the ear, first what I want you to think about is the fact that we're going to divide it into sections. So you can see you've got lavender for outer, blue for middle, and green inner. Now, one thing you want to remember is that there's literally no direct movement of liquid or solid particles or anything between these areas. They have a wall or a membrane separating them so that only sound vibration moves through. So with the outer ear, you have this area that we all put our earrings in, and you can call that an oracle or you can call it um, a pina, P-I-N-N-A. -N -N and then you should remember from doing the bones, we had this chamber going through, this tunnel going through the temporal bone that we call the external auditory meatus. Well, that when you put soft tissue around it, you can now call that the auditory canal. So all of this is outer ear. The middle ear is gonna start at the tympanic membrane, that's your eardrum. Then we have three little bones, auditory ossicles. The first one is the stapes, because it looks like a stirrup. The second one is the incus, it looks like an anvil. And then the third one is the malleus, which sounds like mallet. So the mallet hits the anvil, which transmits the sound to the stirrup, okay? Now, the middle ear needs to have the same air pressure in here as outside the body. And that can change if you've got like soft tissue membranes that are all like squishing up against each other. So this pressure can be different. So to fix that, we have a hole that we call the eustachian tube or the pharyngeopianic tube or there's a third name for it. Oh, auditory tube. They're using auditory tube. I tend to call it eustachian because that's what I learned it as. Okay? But the other name and the other name is pharyngotympanic. All right, pharyngo referring to the forensics pharynx of your throat and the tympanic, the tympanic membrane, okay, which is located right here. Um, also here, we've got a little membrane covered um, opening called the round window. And underneath the stapes right here, we have another window, which is covered with a membrane called the oval window. Now sound is going to come through here, bounce on here, go through the bones, right through here, then it goes through the oval window. And then the sound is like a whale song in the ocean where it travels through this liquid all around the cochlea and it'll eventually get to the end and it'll be deadened or stopped by the round window right there. Okay, so the inner ear I've already mentioned, the cochlea, which looks like a little snail shell. And then this part is for balance or equilibrium. We call this the vestibule and these the semicircular canals. Now finally, I want you to notice the vestibulocochlear nerve coming in, which separates then into the cochlear nerve and the vestibular nerve. All right, next slide. All right, so we're going to look at some of these structures a little bit more uh, with a different view. So again, we're separating outer ear from middle ear from inner ear. And this is just kind of giving you a different view so that you can see better right here, that oval window, okay? And then the round window is gonna be right here and that's where it's gonna deaden that sound, okay? Um, my arrow has gotten messed up. Wow, that's so aggravating. Sometimes that happens when you export. So basically, let's fix these. My cochlea is gonna go to right here my vestibulocochlear nerve is gonna go right there. And yes, that is the vestibule, so that one's correct. And then these are the three branches of the semicircular canals. Now here, I can see my malleus, the incus, and the stapes. Okay, next slide. All right, I like this picture. What someone has done is they've taken a camera and stuck it up the eustachian tube so that you can then see the eardrum or tympanic membrane right here. You got a really nice view of the stapes 
the Incus right here, and then the Malleus right here, which I think is really cool and neat looking. All right, next slide. All right, we're gonna zoom in on the inner ear more. And what you have, you've got the cochlea here, you've got the vestibule here, and you've got the semicircular canals here, okay? Now, the vestibule can be divided into the utricle and the saccule, which are different chambers. I really just want you to remember that that's the vestibule, okay? The same thing with the semicircular canals, the entryway is called the ampulla here and here. Now, these are filled with endolymph and perilymph, okay? Same thing over here with the cochlea. Now, we've got this little curl that goes around and around, which we call the cochlear duct, and next to that is going to be the organs of corti, okay? All right, next slide. All right, now we are zooming in even more. So here is the cochlea, and what we've done is we've cut through it. And just like a snail shell, if you cut through it in this direction, you're gonna see all these little circles. Now these circles have a specific structure. So if we come over here, what you will see is the scala vestibuli and the scala tympani on the superior and inferior aspects. In the middle, we have the cochlear duct, which is also called the scala media because it's in the middle, media means, means middle, okay? Now here and here, we fill that with a liquid that's called perilymph. Now again, that's similar to saline, similar to uh, interstitial fluid or blood plasma or cerebral spinal fluid. And then in here, we have endolymph, which is again, very similar, but slightly different. Now. Down here at the base of the scala media, we have a structure that we call the organ of cordy, and we're gonna blow that up, okay? So over here, you're seeing the organ of cordy, and these are the hair cells, which are the receptors for detecting sound vibration. And what happens is sound is moving through this liquid, and it bends this membrane, which bends these hairs, which depolarizes this cell, which then causes an action potential to be generated on this uh, branch of the cochlear nerve, which then goes up, and then you can see it's coming up into here where it's gonna go to a ganglion and then all go back up to the brain somewhere. That's all I want you to know about this stuff. Now, we're gonna blow this up just a little bit more so you can see some of the other structures just a little bit better. So again, sound vibration comes here, bends this membrane, bends the hair cells, that causes depolarization here, which then causes an action potential to be generated here, which is gonna go along up through there, okay? Um, and that's all I can think of to say. All right, let's look at the vestibule. So in the cochlea, we had perilymph and endolymph, so it's, an, it's a salty ocean in your ear. In the vestibule, we don't have a salty ocean, we have jelly, okay? And that jelly is called the otolithic membrane. And what you're gonna have are little otoliths right here. Now you may have heard of something called ear crystals. They aren't, they aren't woo woo, they are real. Uh, ear crystals is another word for otolith. Now oto means ear and lith means stone. Okay, so ear crystal, ear stone, whatever. All right, so these ear crystals are embedded in that otolithic membrane and they should be fairly evenly distributed. Now, when you rotate your head, these little stones move. A little bit, not a lot. And when they move, they bend those. And when you bend those, you depolarize this. And when you depolarize that, you generate an action potential that gets picked up by the vestibular nerve and goes back to the brain. Now, the vestibule does up, down, static equilibrium, which basically means um, whether you're doing somersaults or circle, you know, a, you, whether you're looking up or looking down, that set of equilibrium. All right, so here is another picture of that um, the vestibule that goes over that function a little bit more. So right here, we've, ooh, we've got the definition of static equilibrium. I do want you to know this definition, static equilibrium. Basically, this is up, down. It tells you about gravity and whether you are accelerating forward or backwards. Okay, so this is what's really getting triggered when you are um, driving in a car and you're going forward, okay? Or if you're jumping up and down on a trampoline or you're jumping forward like a bunny rabbit. So you're doing both forward motion and up-down motion, okay? 
I'm not going to ask you to remember this. I do want you to remember that. And I do want you to remember that. Okay. Um, all right. Next slide. All right. This is the last slide of our ear unit. All right. We are looking at the semicircular canals now. Oops. That should be a little bit smaller. I just grabbed the vestibule with that. So the semicircular canals, which are I'm still doing it. So right there. Now I've made a big enough mess. You can see exactly what I'm looking at. All right. So um, here you do have an endolymph. All right. But it's not going to be having sound waves move through it. Instead, what's going to happen is when you turn your head, this liquid sloshes around. And when it sloshes, it bends these hair cells. That depolarizes those, that depolarizes that. It's then picked up by the vestibular nerve fibers and it goes back to the brain. Okay. What I want you to know. Well, one, endolymph, bending those. Dynamic equilibrium, which basically means rotation, rotating the head. If you are doing like a pirouette or you've seen those ice skaters and they do that little spinning thing all the way around, okay? If you are spinning in circles, that is dynamic equilibrium. I'm not going to ask you about the ampullar or the crista ampullaris, but um, you get the idea. Okay, so that is the end of the ear. And now you can move on to finishing up your lab manual chapter on the eye and ear.